We both know how indecisive I can be, but Seth, <laughs> one thing I know with complete certainty is that you are the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Your core is one of a kind and I'm the luckiest girl to get to marry you. We have faced obstacles, some harder than others, that have helped build the strong foundation of our relationship. It has shown me your unwavering love, constant support, and silent strength. Sometimes I think how funny it is that we grew up only 10 miles apart. Yes, I looked it up. <laughs> and yet, we never met or even knew who the other one was until later in life. In fact, my dad knew who you were before I even did. I like to think that God had a plan. He knew we didn't need each other then. He put us into each other's lives when we needed it most. I feel blessed to have met someone who would be in the rest of my life at such a young age. And I mean young. <laughs> um, it all started when our moms became friends, but through our lifetime of experiences, it blossomed into a friendship I couldn't live without. When we would get picked up from school and we would see the first parrot, we would hold up our fingers and go, one or two, one or two, desperately seeing to, choose, to see two fingers up, meaning we got to go home together. And if that was unfortunately not the case, we would promise each other that we would both go home and watch Arthur. So we were doing the exact same thing when we got home. Megan wanted was somebody to go through all of the life's experiences with. And now I get to this guy. <laughs> so, there's this place called Ellen J. Lane's. <laughs> Megan thought it would be fun to put together a sand volleyball team. So we do. We play. And then all of a sudden there's this guy on one of the other teams. And, <laughs> and so we decide that we're going to meet with that team and play um, outside of our normal volleyball team. And, you know, we play and, and the rest is history. I was like, oh, God. Seth, you are kind, goofy, caring, but most of all, you are lucky. You both are. You get to live this life with someone by your side who loves you exactly the way you are. I am so grateful <laughs> to get, I get to be a part of this day that starts your life together. So, <laughs> let's toast <laughs> to laughter, adventures, game nights, boat rides, and most importantly, to love, to Megan and Seth. I chose you on August 17th, 2021. I choose you today, and I will continue choosing you forever. I love you. To my dearest Megan, from the moment I met you playing volleyball, I knew that you were a special person. You have made my life more exciting and purposeful. From going on our date nights, out to eat, to our game nights together and with friends, and arguing about how to put the sheets on the bed. I can't wait to plan many more adventures 
with you and start a family, with you as my wife and the mother of our children. I see how much family means to you and will stay longer than two hours at my new in-law's house. <laughs> I vow to continue to work on myself and our relationship. I vow to be faithful and supportive and to always make our family's love and happiness my priority. I don't want to be with anybody else by my side. My heart feels full knowing that you are there beside me. I love you and let's get this party started. Now, Megan, if you would all indulge me for a moment, I'd like to take a little stroll down memory lane, if you will. Patty and I found out in the summer of 93 that we were first pregnant with our first child. And as expecting parents, you know, we were very excited, obviously. It's all the things that expecting parents would do. Painted the nursery a nice neutral color, because back then in the 1990s, you didn't have gender reveal parties. You waited until the baby was born to find out what gender it was. So, we went along fine, and uh, there was a little bit of complications toward the end of the pregnancy, and our good friend, Dr. Alfred Bediaco, said late March, early April was the expected date, but with those, with those uh, complications, he scheduled an induction of labor on March 31st. But it wasn't until 2 a.m. the next morning, April 1st, that our new baby was born. And Dr. Bediaco and his big booming voice says, congratulations, it's a boy. Twice again and said, April Fools, it's a girl. <laughs> I was just as excited as before because all of my mind started racing with all kinds of extra things. As it turns out, sports again, princesses, what are those girls? American Girl Dolls. Barbies, meeting the guy, and eventually the father of the bride speech, which brings us to today. And in conclusion, I had tested this speech out to my wife a week or so ago, and she said it didn't really have enough tear-jerking moments. <laughs> so 11 years ago, as many of you know, I suffered a severe cardiac episode. I went into surgery, and that night I wrote a letter saying that I may not be here to be able to do this, but it's my pleasure to be here to say cheers to the bride and groom.
Seth, uh, please repeat after me. I give this ring as a symbol of my love. <laughs> I, give, I give this ring as a symbol of my love. I give this ring as a symbol of my love. I promise to share my life with you. I promise to share my life with you. I promise to love you in all times, in all places, and in all ways forever. I promise to love you in all times, in all places, and forever. <laughs> I give this ring as a symbol of my love. I give this ring as a symbol of my love. I promise to share my life with you. I promise to share my life with you. I promise to love you in all times, in all places, and always, forever. Ever. I already forgot it. <laughs> I promise to love you. I promise to love you. In all times. In all times. In all places. In all places. In all ways, forever. In all ways, forever. <laughs> presence of this company. It is my great pleasure that I now declare you husband and wife. You may now kiss. <laughs> Well